afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're located. Thank you very much for joining us uh, at today's webinar. My name is Maria Trulenke and I am the Business Network Manager at the IIRC. A4S and the IIRC are pleased to welcome you to the sixth in a series of webinars to support finance teams to address the practical issues of integrating sustainability into financial processes and decision making. The title of today's webinar is Debt Finance, Embedding ESG Considerations into Treasury Team Activities, where ESG is a widely used abbreviation in the investment community to stand for environmental, social and governance considerations. When lenders and investors take financial decisions, it is their responsibility to price risks correctly. Yet environmental, social and governance risks including some of the greatest risks we face globally, are not being priced in. There has been an increase in understanding in recent times and positive changes such as the rapid expansion of green bonds. However, where companies and finance providers are taking steps towards more sustainable finance, these changes, though growing in pace, are still incremental. To achieve the scale required, a fundamental shift is needed. This webinar will explore how to embed environmental, social and governance considerations into Treasury team activities. It will introduce practical concepts, tools and examples to help organisations align their Treasury and sustainability objectives in order to create and maintain value. This guide is one of a series of guides published by the A4S CFO Leadership Net Network to help organizations embed social and environmental consideration into their strategy, culture and processes. In other words, these guides support the adoption of integrated thinking and action. Next slide, please. <coughs> Thank you. I will introduce this webinar and lead the Q&A session, which will take place during the last part of this webinar. To discuss today about how to embed environmental, social and governance considerations into Treasury team activities and help organisations to align their Treasury and sustainability objectives in order to create and maintain value, we have the great pleasure to have two speakers who will share with us their insights, ideas and the lessons learned and will exchange with you on these topics. Our first speaker today is Helen Slinger, Executive Director at the A4S. Helen will present an overview of the A4S practical guide to embed ESG considerations into Treasury team activities. After Helen, Chris Tregena, Head of Treasury at Pennon Group, Pennon Group is a British water utility and waste management company based in Exeter. Chris uh, will afterwards share with us how he and the Pennon Treasury team have embedded these considerations into their day-to-day -day activities. Next slide, please. The two presentations will be followed by a Q&A session. I would like to emphasize that this is an interactive discussion, so please do feel free to submit your questions as we go along. On the right-hand side of your screen, you will find a box. By clicking on the chat function, you may ask a question or make a comment during the presentations. You can either share your comment or question with everyone or send it only to the organizers. We very much encourage you to discuss as well with our speakers during the Q&A session at the end. To be able to hear correctly our speakers today as well, uh, may I kindly ask you to all please put your computer or your phone on mute. This webinar is recorded. The recording will be made available on the websites of both the IIRC and A4S after the session. And without further ado, I shall give the floor now to Helen Slinger, Executive Director at the A4S. Helen, thank you for being here today and over to you. Thank you, Maria. Um, and, and good morning from, from the UK and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone else, regardless of where you're joining from. And I'm Helen Slinger and I'm the Executive Director at Accounting for Sustainability, or A4S for short. At A4S, we work across the finance and accounting community, and our vision is for sustainable business to be business as usual. 
I want to start by thanking Maria and the IRC for giving us this opportunity to share our work with you on how we embed ESG considerations into Treasury team activities. I've got about 15 or 20 minutes uh, to give you a flavour of the materials that we've developed in this area before you will hear from Chris. And in that time, I hope to give you some tips and some pointers to help you develop and align your company's treasury and sustainable business objectives. Before we start, though, um, what we often like to do is to get a feel for the mix of people on the line. And um, if I could ask you all, therefore, to click on the chat function, and if I could ask you all to indicate the nature of your role by typing into that chat function. So if you're the treasurer, if you could please type treasurer, if you're an accountant or work in the finance team of your organization, if you could please uh, write finance. If you are from a bank or if you're an investor and have a role in the investor community, if you could please type bank or investor. And um, similarly, if you work in the area of sustainability or ESG, if you could put words to that effect, sustainability or ESG. And finally, if you have a different role to all of these, if you wouldn't just mind typing uh, the area in which you work. Um, it gives us really useful information to know who's listening to these webinars and to get a sense of the, the perspective that you're coming from. Um, with your, with your interest and with your questions at the end. I can see lots of those coming in now, so thank you very much for doing that. Um, as those are coming in, if we could just move to the next slide and we'll make a start. Thank you. So first of all, I'd like to share with you why we developed this guide. So the key purpose really was to help organizations align their treasury and sustainability objectives and in doing so, create and maintain value for their organisations. In terms of context, both companies and their finance providers have strategic, financial and moral incentives to work towards a sustainable economy. And pressure to respond to issues such as climate change, I think you'll all agree, is, is growing. And it's growing because of shifting social norms and also because people are starting to realise there can be financial implications if they fail to act. At the same time, cap capital market participants are focusing more and more on the creation of positive value, not only for their own organisation, but for society as a whole. So this is not just about risk management. The slide here shows how the key areas covered by the guide, uh, sorry, shows the key areas covered by the guide, uh, and I'll briefly walk you through these on this webinar, starting with you know, what is sustainable finance. Within this guide, we've defined sustainable finance as covering two things. So firstly, it describes mainstream investment and lending, where these incorporate ESG considerations. And secondly, it includes investment and lending with specific environmental or social aims, such as green bonds. Can we take the next slide, please. Thank you. So why is considering sustainability or ESG important for corporate treasury teams? And um, I think it's probably clear to all of us that historically sustainability has not been seen as relevant to the activities of treasury teams. But over the last few years, many treasurers have started to explore their role within sustainability. Companies themselves are increasingly incorporating sustainability into their corporate strategies. And these strategy obviously need, need, need financing. And debt providers are also becoming more interested in the sustainability utility, if you like, of their assets, as well as in the financial returns. And um, we're seeing growing evidence on how incorporating sustainability factors can lead to benefits for borrowers um, and also the ESG performance and the cost of capital are directly linked. Perhaps that's something that, that Chris can comment on in his presentation, whether they're seeing that themselves. And um, one of the things this guide really brings home, though, is that the slice of the market is that is currently considered sustainable finance, such as green bonds and impacting investors, still is really very small. You know, what we as a society need to achieve is for the same ESG concepts and methods to be incorporated into mainstream finance. Um, a market uh, it, it to have ESG integrated throughout um, is efficient in providing investors and lenders with ESG information. 
the prices would accurately reflect available information about long-term sustainability and capital would be directed to sustainable uses. That's what we're hoping for. Um, debt would correctly price value and uh, correctly value and price in environmental and social external externalities, which would be transparently disclosed within that. And this uh, society such as this, an economy such as this, would enable investors and lenders to make informed credit decisions and correctly price the risks they're taking. But uh, I guess the question is, you know, is this world achievable? Is this something that we could could get to? Um, and yes, we believe it is. Um, and so do our CFO leadership network members who help to develop this guide. Um, <clears throat> in going down this route, it's not accept, uh, asking for the acceptance of higher risk. In fact, it arguably has lower risk, but to become a reality, it will need additional capability within debt providers for evaluating the use of proceeds and the organization achieving sustainable business objectives. It will need market reform, and this can only be achieved with collaboration from all parties across the investment chain to promote it and be proactive in providing change. Next slide, please. So one of the things we did in developing this guide is that we interviewed a number of debt providers to get their views on the role of ESG in the debt markets. So what did we learn from them? We learned that debt providers are incorporating ESG considerations into their credit risk assessments. And we got an understanding of some of the reasons why they're doing this. They're doing it because they recognize that poor sustainability credentials can be indicative of problems in broader management quality. They're doing it because they know that long-term sustainability factors have the potential to affect future viability and cash flows. And also they're doing it because they recognize there can be reputational risks associated with providing debt to sectors such as arms or tobacco or coal. You can see on the screen some of the quotes from our interviews. The top one from a fund manager saying these risks cannot be ignored. And the next one down from a credit analyst. When things go wrong, they do so significantly. And therefore, it makes perfect sense that ESG considerations are being incorporated into screening strategies and reflected in lending and investment decisions. Next slide, please. So having understood the landscape with debt providers, what does that mean for treasury teams? Well, treasury teams are, of course, pivotal to an organization's strategy, to their funding and ultimately their success. Sustainability considerations are increasingly influencing organizations' strategies, their business models and their financial planning. But if companies are not taking action, it's likely that these factors will reduce both their financial performance and their cash flows. The role, the role of Treasury, sorry, could I ask you to go on mute? Okay. Thank you. The role of Treasury teams is therefore closely linked to the risks and opportunities arising from sustainability. It's essential that Treasury teams have a common understanding of what sustainability means to their organisation so that they can take the opportunity to integrate it into their debt raising activities. Our interviews were with both debt, debt providers and with CFO leadership network members, and um, we identified the treasury, te treasury activities that are most affected by sustainability considerations. These are shown on the screen now um, and obviously expanded on within the guide. So firstly, the activities at the outset of the debt raising process in identifying the need for finance, the type of finance and determining the parties to work with. This includes finding out whether your lenders are signatories to initiatives such as the TCFD, which is the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, the UNEPFI, which is the UN Environment Programme Finance Initiative, the PRI, which are the Principles for Responsible Investment, or the Equator Principles. It includes reviewing their public sustainability disclosures and using this information to select lenders who are advanced on these issues. Just having a problem with the slides. I'll continue and hopefully we'll get those back. 
Um, yes. Secondly, those activities Ooh. to determine pricing, covenant, and short term, sorry, and term sheet criteria. So, for example, being prepared for covenants or term sheets that incorporate sustainability performance requirements. Thirdly, and great, we've got them back on the screen now, um, managing relationships with debt providers. This includes building an open dialogue with debt providers on sustainability and engaging with them on how it may impact pricing. In fact, we're already starting to see examples of discounts being applied for good sustainability performance. And finally, activities relating to cash management, debt monitoring and reporting. This suggests ways to work with peers in the finance, investor relations and sustainability teams to monitor compliance against governments and meet relevant reporting demands. <clears throat> so in summary, um, you know, we believe there are opportunities for Treasury teams not only to anticipate changes, but to lead the market in driving these changes. Um, this includes playing a role in encouraging the mainstream debt market to fund sustainable outcomes. And by responding effectively, treasurers can benefit in areas such as improved access to capital, uh, improving pricing, reputation and stakeholder engagement, and obviously also in attracting new investors. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, a useful analysis to do early on um, is for you to assess where your organisation currently stands in terms of maturity in this space. And to help you with that, we have developed a maturity map, which is included in the guide. It can help to identify where you currently are across the four areas we just talked through on the previous slide. It looks at the various activities you may be engaged in at the moment and helps you to identify some potential next steps to move up the maturity curve. And those activities on the right hand side of the maturity map shows what companies are doing that are that are fairly advanced in this space. Next slide, please. In order to bring the whole guide um, to life, um, it also has a number of practical examples of what corporates and their debt providers are doing to integrate ESG. And you'll see a selection of those on the slide in front of you. If you could just click briefly for me. I think we're just gonna highlight the pen on. Here we go. Um, so we're obviously very fortunate to have Chris Degener from uh, Penon on the webinar today to talk us through the work that they've been doing on their sustainable finance framework. Um, and a version of what he's going to talk to is included in the guide as well. Next slide, please. So with that, I will hand back to Maria um, to introduce Chris properly. Um, our contact details are there. You can find us on Twitter, on LinkedIn, um, on the obviously on our website, and you can contact us directly by email if you so wish. So thank you. Back to you, Maria. Thank you very much, Helen, for a really thought-provoking and scene-setting um, session. Uh, just a reminder, of course, that uh, Debt Finance Guide is both available in the A4S website and, of course, we will be sharing it with all of you after this webinar. Uh, I would now like to hand over, as Helen was mentioning earlier, to Chris Trigena. We've got the pleasure to have Chris uh, here at this webinar, Head of Treasury at Pennon Group. And Chris will present us how how he and the Penn and Treasury team have actually embedded those ESG into their day-to-day -day activities. Chris, please, over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Maria. Uh, if we, maybe if we can go to the first slide. So, my name is Chris Tregena and I am, the, as I've said, the Head of Treasury at Penon Group. So, Penon Group is a FTSE 250 listed company and is the largest environmental infrastructure group um, in the UK. We are focused on the UK. We have the Southwest Water business and the Bournemouth Water business, which is based in the southwest of England. And then we have the Viridor business, which is a national UK business. So focusing on the Southwest Water business, we have Southwest Water, which looks after the water and wastewater services uh, within the Southwest. And is, is probably one of the 
the easiest areas for us to look at the sustainable finance. The capital investment we have for Southwest Water is about improving the water quality, in improving the assets that we have within the area to ensure that we are a sustainable business going forward. So it, it is an area that, that we've looked at and looking to embed our sustainable finance through. Virador, uh, on the other hand, is a waste management business. We have invested 1.5 billion in, in the business over the last five to seven years and has undergone a transformation from a landfill business, uh, recognising the need to change um, and some of the, the changes the government were, were looking at making to move companies away from landfill. We have invested that money to turn it into more of a recycling and an energy recovery business. So we now have uh, a network of recycling centres and are in the process of building out 11 energy recovery facilities. We have uh, seven in operation, as you can see there, with three at which are, are just coming out of construction and into an operational ramp up phase and a further one which should be online within the next 12 to 18 months. So it's been an interesting time for us and there's been an interesting investors working with companies to to get those up and running and there have been a lot of successful green bond issuances as a company we don't tend to issue so much in the debt capital markets so we were looking at other ways that we could incorporate sustainable finance into our business so we've been looking at leasing we've been looking at loan facilities you've been placed on hold please wait that's great thank you very much so so that looking at that this slide here we have the diversified funding sources that we have so the majority of our funding is in finance leases you've and been placed we on hold please wait looking at ways in which we can incorporate the the assets in a sustainable way we then have a, a number of bilateral bank facilities and uh, private placements as well you can also see from that slide that we also have uh, just short of 1.2 billion of cash and committed facilities a number of those revolving credit facilities we have are not drawn cash so therefore it is looking at how we can incorporate sustainable financing and sustainable kpis within those to show what we're doing but with the use of the green bond principles the green loan principles you need to show how how you're allocating the the money to that business so without having drawn those funds it was looking at ways that we could still show what we, how we were working and what we were doing uh, and, and giving ourselves a chance to, to show some of the work that we were doing. So if we can move on to the next slide. Thank you. So our balance sheet here, starting in May 2018, we introduced our sustainable financing framework and we we looked to bring as much of our debt in through that as we could. Uh, we are very fortunate. Our board is very supportive of, 
of the business and the sustainability uh, aspect that we're looking at. So through our CFO and the CFO network and A4S, we've, we've put a, a lot of work into to what we're doing as a business. And it's the board are, are very supportive, as I said, but there was a, a not that way of bringing that focus into the businesses so through a sustainability department at a pen on level we have looked to create steering groups create executive committees that will will bring the board's vision into those businesses and that is something that it's taken a while for us to set up but it has really allowed us to embed the sustainability aspect throughout the business and and has helped from a treasury point of view to be able to to go to our our banks and our investors and look to issue sustainable finance so you you can see from the slide here that um, in the last financial year, we had issued 600 million of our financing through our sustainable financing framework. And that was a mixture of leasing, of loans, and the revolving credit facilities. So we issue or, or we sign up to our our loans uh, at a pen on group level and then have traditionally lent that down into the viridor business so therefore we haven't got the ability there to directly link some of our loans to to the uh, to the capital till expenditure that's been happening in that business so we've looked at KPI link loans to show our ESG performance uh, and within Southwest Water looking at some of the KPIs that they need to achieve for their regulated business and seeing how we can incorporate those into the financings we do. So we, as you can see there we have used Sustainalytics as our ESG score provider and we, we've looked to incorporate that within our loan documents. So our objective and our aim is to ensure and, and improve that score each year. And in return for improving that score, the margins on our loans are variable. So if we achieve an improvement within a year, we will see the margin come down. And if we don't meet that target, there, there would be an additional margin to pay. So it really is putting sustain, sustainability into the core of our financings and can have a, a big impact on the amount of interest that we're paying. Uh, it's something at the moment that I think is growing very much now, but when we started doing this uh, at the beginning of last year, it was it was very new and we were one of the first UK companies to issue sustainability linked loans. So I think it is developing, it's a very fast developing area of, of the bank's business and, and the banks have quite a lot of their own commitments to me so they are looking to do to do different financings they are looking to use their sustainability teams to create new products that will help us as businesses be able to look to create a more sustainable economy look to create a more sustainable business for ourselves and and that that is where we need to get to so we're we're very pleased to be working with our banks and and some are further along the curve than others a, a bit like the maturity map you saw, saw there uh, from from helen and a4s on on what we should be doing for from a corporate point of view you know, the banks are at varying degrees in their maturity on providing these products 
So we've been working with our banks and, and we have a, a number of relationship banks to, to bring them along with us. And hopefully that will increase the amount of sustainability linked financings that we can do in the future. And it is the way that, that we look to do our business. We understand at the moment being that it is still in its development that there are some banks who, who won't be able to do it. And therefore we're working with everyone in that way but we're not saying to our banks we can't work with you we're trying to bring them on the journey as well so from a southwest water point of view we have a lot more sustainability uh, kpis available to us and it is the business is ring fenced from from the panel group so we can link link our loans there to things that are important to our customers. So we've linked our loans at this level to bathing water quality. We have about a third of the bathing waters in the UK in our area. So in and our area does um, rely quite heavily on the tourism industry. So it's something that is very important to our customers. It's something that's very important to us. So being able to link our loans to our bathing water quality and the number of excellent bathing waters that we have means that we are showing our customers that it is something that we want to improve and that we know that it is important to them. So if I could go to the next slide. So the final slide I have here is looking at the sustainable financing framework. And there are four core components that we need to be looking at here to create a framework that um, can, will be put out uh, to your green investors or to your banks to show what you're planning on doing and how you're going to do it. So the four core components there are the use of proceeds, the management of proceeds, the selection and evaluation and annual reporting. So I think probably we're probably looking at this, the, the easy part is showing how you're going to use the money and how you're going to manage that. I get the hard part and the bit that is going to put maybe a little bit more work on onto yourselves is the annual reporting because it will end up being a, a separate reporting document that you will need to share with your investors but i think it it's when you start looking at it as a whole it you're looking at things that you're already doing so therefore there might be a little bit more of work to be done to show how you've allocated the money but what you're allocating it to will already be understood within your businesses to to the sustainable outcomes of your businesses so the use of proceeds it is as it says it's what are you going to use the financing for and there are through the green bond principles the green loan principles um criteria there that set out how how and what you should be using this money for so when you're looking at creating your framework you're look you need to look at those eligible criteria and see how they fit within the business i think it's quite important that you understand the business operations and how how this will fit before you create the framework for something and then try and make it fit the business so i guess the first thing that people would we maybe need to understand is is how their business is operating and something that i've probably had to learn a lot more now is how how our business operates what we're doing what the plans are for the future whereas before i was looking at how much money did we need to meet the capital expenditure now it's looking at what is that capital expenditure why are we doing the various things that we're planning on doing and how can I incorporate that into the funding that I do? So the management of, fund, uh, of proceeds is the, the second core component and that is looking at 
not just bringing the money in and using it for general corporate purposes. So it needs to be ring fenced uh, before uh, ring fenced before you can allocate it in into the business, and then you can use the allocation to see to show your investors where that money has gone. So the selection and evaluation process. It need. I think it's probably the bit that needs to be reviewed and understood. To how do you understand how those capital investments are going to be fit within your eligible criteria, and then a a third party opinion on your overall framework will show you and your investors that what you have have decided is is aligned with these principles. With the annual reporting, we have just released our first uh, impact report. So, and it's available on our website. And we have looked at what we've done in the last year and given, given a detailed um, report into how the assets that we have allocated money to have performed. Uh, we've looked at the various KPIs that we have um, used and showing how we've done against those KPIs. Uh, and there are a, a number of things that would probably be, it would be nice to expand on. And I think as we develop this over the years, we will expand on them. But some of the, the areas that you can look to show through this report would be your carbon savings or your energy efficiency. So I think that's probably all I wanted to say and give you a bit of an, an overview of our financing structure and then how we've used a sustainable financing framework to, to bring that in to quite a significant amount of our most recent debt. So if I hand back to Maria and then maybe Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris, um, and a, a very, very insightful presentation today. And uh, it's really interesting to see that ESG performance and uh, how the cost of capitals are, are directly linked as well. Um, let's now open the floor to questions. Uh, just a reminder, of course, for, for those of you in the line, you may use the chat function, which should appear on your screen box, uh, to type in your questions. Um, we would like this to be as, as interactive as possible. So by all means, uh, do um, either type them in or if you'd like to unmute yourself uh, when appropriate and, and, um, and say your question, that's also allowed. Uh, I've been receiving a few throughout the, the webinar. So thank you, thank you for these. Um, I'm going to start with a question to Helen. Um, and it's someone in the line that says, I've not thought about how sustainability might impact my role before. Where should I start? Helen, if uh, you'd like perhaps to, to answer. And of course, Chris, you may add anything uh, you'd like your end as well. Sure, shall I go first? Um, I'm obviously going to assume that that question is, is, is from a treasurer and I'm coming at it from their, their perspective. So um, I think the first thing to do is, is probably to talk to your colleagues and um, talk to your colleagues in sustainability um, those, and those that are responsible for strategy and for your cap capital investments and really get a sense of what's going on in the business um, you know what different projects are they working on now what projects are in the pipeline um, that might be relevant for you to align your um, your activities with um, I guess once you've done that, I would suggest that you look at the practical examples in our debt finance guide um, to give you a flavor of the, the kind of things that, that's out there. Um, you know, what are other companies doing? What are um, debt providers um, already um, making available? The kind of products that they've got. Um, and it shows some examples in there of what banks are doing in terms of developing green products and sustainability performance link products. And that'll give you a sense of um, what your options might be. Um, I would also find out specifically what your current debt providers are doing. Um, so, um, you know, what are the banks doing? What, um, you know, what, um, 
what can you uh, become part of that, that, that already exists? Um, and arguably it's worth having you know, a direct conversation with them as well. Um, to Chris's point about sometimes it's about bringing them with you. They might not be readily available. Um, and also I'd encourage you to talk to your CFO um, so maybe take a sustainability colleague with you or the appropriate person from the business and really just sort of sit down and explore um, you know, what, what you found out through your various conversations and the research that you've done and think about what your ideas might be and what might be possible um, for you to take forward. Um, so Chris, I don't know if you've got anything um, additional to add, but that would be my, that would be my thoughts. No, I think, yeah, I think uh, what you've said there it, it covers uh, covers the main areas i mean i i think the banks uh, are doing an awful lot in this area and i think it, they can support you a lot to be able to bring you along this journey um yes understanding what's happening in in the business is is probably the thing that's been most challenging for me i i've, I've been with our business for a number of years and to actually go and, and out in, and understand from from the people in the operations what we're doing and how we're doing it has been really sort of a bit of an eye opener really um we've all we're trying to to provide water and we're all to to our area in the most sustainable way and have always done that so that therefore sort of being able to understand what the next capital expenditure is going to be has been has been really interesting but it is about understanding where, where you are in the business and and what sustainability the sustainability function uh, may be doing and then from your bank side they should be able to support you Absolutely. Thank you both. Um, we've got a very, very proactive audience, so that's wonderful. A, a few more questions. I think this one would be perhaps more specific to, to you, Chris, around those uh, sustainability linked loans that you mentioned earlier. Um, someone in the audience would like to know what type of companies are pursuing these loans and perhaps if you could highlight uh, the key challenges and opportunities with this type of loans, that would be and the, the, the question, thank you. So, I, so in terms of companies pursuing these loans, I think uh, a number of companies are now, are now looking at these and it, it's not just the companies who maybe already have the sustainable uh, focus, it's those looking to improve where they are. So it's not just about uh, those that are already quite mature in this area it's about how other companies bring bring their sustainability functions along with them to be able to to show as a company that they are moving in the right direction I mean the banks are now looking at these in a lot into companies in a, a lot more ways one of them being sustainability so therefore we we need to be showing that and the companies need to to be able to show and understand what they're doing and see how they can link that rather than trying to create something to do it thank you chris um i'm just mindful i mentioned earlier and encouraged a uh, debate so i've seen uh, a few attendees have unmuted themselves perhaps I, i'll just uh, stay quiet for the moment to see if anyone in the audience would like to pose uh, their question verbally otherwise i've got a few others here in in the chat function but would anyone in, in the audience like to ask a question directly to our speakers No. Okay. I'll I'll continue then. Um, there's a there's a question uh, to Helen now, um, and it's uh, around again that that sustainability and and its impact. And um, the the person in the audience is saying you've talked about some of the things that we should be doing now, but I'd be interested to hear about what changes you anticipate in the debt markets in the next few years. Helen? <laughs> okay, great. Um, so I mentioned earlier that we did um, some interviews as part of our research to feed into the debt finance guide. So 
Um, I guess some of the things that we found in that research in, in terms of you know where those debt providers are thinking that they themselves will take the step, so where they're anticipating others doing so. Um, I guess some of the things we found out, we would expect to see um, an increasing body of evidence that sustainable organisations are becoming more attractive to debt providers. So, for example, um, you know, lenders may start to have baseline ESG requirements for access to debt. Um, we can expect them to be setting additional sustainability criteria for those particularly insensitive or high carbon industries. So those might be thermal coal mining or, or fossil fuel based engine manufacturers. And those um, criteria will be as a condition of access to, to capital. Um, Ultimately, I think organisations that have a business model which isn't aligned to a sustainable future may find that they have to pay a premium for their debt or they could be outright excluded by some providers. Um, we touched on discounts earlier and I think discounts will become increasingly applied in the next few years um, where organisations are showing commitment and a good track record on sustainability. And we can expect banks and investors to essentially themselves be facing more risks where they choose um, to fund unsustainable companies and projects and they may be penalised reputationally and possibly um, a debt recovery perspective as well. Um, so I think probably to, to, to mitigate that, um, lenders will be expecting greater disclosure of sustainability risks. Um, and information on how they affect business models and financial plans. And by that, I don't just mean where there is specifically a, a green bond or similar in, in place, um, but ultimately for, for all their debt. Um, so I think what we can expect to see that there'll be an increased focus on sustainability factors by nearly all key market stakeholders. And um, so that, you know, obviously will include debt providers, banks and investors. Um, but also credit rating agencies, listing authorities, regulators, and, 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 and uh, issuers themselves. Thank you, Helen. Certainly a, a complete game changer and uh, yeah, lots of, lots of various areas involved. Um, I think we're, we're actually uh, really doing very well time-wise, so there's time for another question, and this, this one will go to Chris now. Um, someone in the audience asking, uh, Chris, what surrogate do you use to measure carbon saving, energy efficiency, and incorporate these in your annual reports? So it's an area that we've been working very, very hard on at the moment, because so we have been um, through moving away from landfill and into energy recovery, we're seeing that there are a number, of, there is a, a saving there. So we've been using rate analysis to to see what the, the landfill scenario would, had we continued uh, in that uh, way, would have created in a, in a carbon um, emissions and then looked at the saving that we've we would achieve through using the energy recovery facilities. Um, so it's through the rate analysis that we've, we've done that on those. Um, and and then it's something that we're spending a lot of our time looking to develop at the moment with various consultancies. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chris. Um, okay, so um, unless there's any more questions from the audience, uh, I think we've done extremely well as well on, on, on time. Please do feel free once again to either use the chat function or unmute yourselves now that we've got Chris and Helen available. I'll just leave a few seconds in case there's any last questions. Excellent. Oh, there's one. There's one for Helen. Um, uh, I'll read it out loud to you, Helen. It says, Helen, don't you consider that embedding ESG considerations is much more difficult for corporates active in traditional industri industrial sectors than for corporates like the Pennon Group? Interesting one. Yeah. Um, and I think the answer is that 
you know, it, it's arguably not easy for anybody. Um, <clears throat> and it does very much depend on your industry in terms of how you approach this. Um, I think there are opportunities for everybody. Um, the economy is changing, is going to change. Um, and I think a lot of the world's um, challenges that we face, such as, as climate change, um, such as social inequality, um, and, and you only have to look to things like the, the, you know, the sustainable development goals issued by the UN um, to show the direction of travel of, um, of the, the, the economy and the markets and, and society in general. Um, and, and these things aren't, aren't anticipated to, to change um, other than in that direction of travel. So the more prepared that an organisation can be, um, in responding to these issues, um, the more that they can be aligned um, with them and you know, be con be, have a consistent approach within their organisation. Um, and within that, obviously, you know, the treasury function and, 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 and you know, capital management being um, aligned, then the better you're positioning yourselves as an organisation. Um, so I think if it, if it were easy, then you know, companies would have always done things this way and, and, and banks and the markets would always have done things this way. Um, but but it, it isn't straightforward necessarily. Um, so that's one of the reasons why you know, we wanted to produce this guide and equally why we produce other similar guides to help to give uh, you know, organisations practical tips um, uh, to, and, and examples of ways to address some of these challenges. Um, so yes, I think you're right. It probably it, it can be harder, um, but um, I think it, it doesn't mean that we, sh we shouldn't we shouldn't start and we shouldn't start to respond um, to try and put put you and yourself your organisation in a, in a good position. Thank you, Helen. And and actually on that note, uh, we just had a. a, a a question that is related to um, to your comment, uh, and I know we've done webinars in the past uh, around the social capital. So, um, someone in the audience interested in knowing what do you think is the social element in sustainable financing? Sorry, was that for? Me or for Chris? Oh, sorry. Yes, um, either of you really. I, I was I was linking it to your comment earlier. So perhaps if you'd like to start, and then I've got one last question for for Chris, and then we'll have to wrap up. I'm afraid because we're um, just about to hit nine o'clock. But um, who who would like to start on the social element in sustainable financing? Um, so, I mean, the social element can be a number of things. Um, I mentioned that there's some examples in, in the guide and some of the things that are picked up there. Um, uh, there's a case study in there that relates to um, uh, inequality, um, gender inequality. And um, so QBE have issued a gender inequality bond that's aimed at financing investments in organisations where their lenders are um, you know, trying to foster workplace gender equality within the organisation. So that's one example of where these could be. We've also seen um, SDG bonds. So looking across all the different social factors um, within the sustainable development goals and actually setting themselves targets within the organisation and how they're going to respond to those goals um, and then the performance of the, the um, the performance of the organization against those goals is reflected in the terms and sometimes the pricing of um of those bonds so um those are i guess some examples but essentially anything that it's that an organization is doing for uh, social means um can be uh, the performance of those uh, of those initiatives can be reflected um, within um, within debt, um, it can be incorporated in, in in one way or another, and we're starting to see examples of that. Okay, excellent, thank you. Uh, and last one, I'll, I'll go with you, Chris. Now, um, how would you measure, in financial terms, output? And it says it between brackets, benefits of investment in efficiency in the use of water for different stakeholders, for instance. I'm happy to read it again mm -hmm. if you need me to. So, yeah, so how would so you how to how would you measure those um 
outputs of investment in efficiency in uh, in the use of of water for for various stakeholders so in a scenario like that how would how would the measurement um procedures be in in, in financial so one of so one of the things that uh, we have used to uh, for the uh, green leasing is uh, we have been building a new water treatment works so in terms of creating efficiency there the the new technology that is being used within that facility uh, means it's using less chemicals it's it's using different types of ways of treating that water to give a better quality of water but using um, less energy uh, less chemicals as I said so there there will be financial benefits um, for for that and and that will I guess then link through to to our stakeholders uh, in terms of the the customers and the customer stakeholders they they would be they will be receiving a, a higher quality water or a more st consistent quite uh, high quality of water through through the new technology that's being used there so there will be a few financial quantifiable financial benefits that we can show through that investment thank you chris thank you very much um i'm mindful of time we've we've got three minutes left uh katrina if i may ask you to click to the next slide please um i'd just like to to draw this uh to a close now um i would really uh, like to thank our great speakers today helen slinger executive director at a4s and chris Trugena, head of treasury at pennant group uh, for sharing your insights your experience on this topic um, it's been it's been really thought-provoking and i i hope the audience coincides with me it's been incredibly helpful and um, if uh, for the audience if you've missed any of the previous A4S IIRC webinars, just uh, to highlight that the recordings are available both on the A4S website and the IIRC, so we encourage you to visit those and uh, just listen to, to the recordings of, of previous webinars. Um, also to mention, as we're um, in November now, uh, this is the final 2019 A4S IIRC webinar. That doesn't mean that we're not uh, hosting more in the new year. We're very much looking forward to sharing with you a compelling calendar of topics. So please do stay tuned uh, for dates and topics which will be announced in due course. Until then, um, we hope that you've found this webinar helpful and insightful. Um, we invite you to download the guide in the A4S website to use all of the resources available, both the, the IIRC one and the A4S. And uh, thank you very much for your time and attention today. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.